Welcome to this video where I'm doing my first proper desolder and resoldering mod of a soldered keyboard. This will include just a quick rundown of the equipment I'm going to use and then straight into the into the modding of the keyboard. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. I've spent lots of money on hot swap keyboards that are either on my shelf here, they're on their way here imminently, or will be getting shipped when some group buys ship out. Hot swappable keyboards are fun, they're easy, they're convenient, and they're a great way to cut your teeth. But if you want to get serious in this hobby, eventually you've got to get soldering. Soldering opens up the game so that you can properly mod any pre-built keyboard as well as build your own from scratch, and that's where the real fun is. And the logical place to start is to desolder, mod, and resolder a keyboard you already have on your shelf. Logical. There's lots to learn, what desoldering equipment, what soldering iron, what solder, and that's before you even get started working on the keyboard itself. I went with what I would call a mid-budget setup. My rule is buy nice, not twice, but as with all working adults, there is only so much I can set aside for one hobby. And in this hobby, you want to set aside as much as you can for actual keyboards and keyboard parts. For desoldering, I went for a full desoldering station, a desoldering station being a small unit which houses the controls, electrics and the pump, with the gun just being a small and lightweight unit connected to the main station via an electrical lead and a hose. The small glass tube on the gun is removable for emptying the solder. I went for one of the cheapest desoldering stations on the market, but one with good reviews. The Pros Kit SS331H. Um, it was 100 euros, I got it off of AliExpress. I'm pretty handy and I'm confident I can repair the machine if it needs it and on the performance front I'm sure it will outperform the more expensive gun only options like the Hakko as everything on those is housed in the gun itself. Um, the cheaper alternative to this is obviously one of the small manual pumps that you can get and you use with a soldering iron so you don't have to spend lots of money on this to start off with. There, are, There is a, a vastly cheaper alternative there. For the soldering iron I went with the Miniware TS80P a smart soldering iron. Iron. Um, this was a little more on the expensive side and bought solely for use with my keyboard with the convenience of it being kind of plug and play using a USB cable um, as long as you have a, a suitable USB-C power supply. Um, beware though, it needs to be a constant supply above a certain voltage. So with this soldering iron you may find you have low voltage issues until you sort out a decent power source. The easiest and fastest being a mobile phone charger. Um, and then just any USB-C cable going from that charger to the soldering iron. This soldering iron will set you back about 100 euros, but you can get much cheaper soldering irons that will do a, a fine job for about 10 euros on kind of Amazon and AliExpress that just plug directly into a wall socket. For the solder, I went with Ecotin Isocore Ultra Clear 0.57mm SN100NI Plus with 2.2% flux. I couldn't get the more common 6040 stuff as RS supplies um, won't sell leaded solder to non-business buyers. You need a few other little bits like something to stand the soldering iron to keep the tip in a safe position while you're not using it and some wire wool cleaning stuff for cleaning the tip of the soldering iron but the previously mentioned items are the other big ticket items really. So the keyboard I will be modding is my Durgod Taurus K320, which I previously did a rough and ready switch lube and case dampening job on. Um, this will be my first time desoldering and my first time in a long time soldering, but I have an engineering background and have done quite a bit of welding using both MIG and stick. Um, this is very different, but I have a good footing and have at least done some soldering in the past. The Durgod is a keyboard I've wanted to mod properly since I got it and I'm doing it before my Mel Geek Mojo 60 MOS keyboard as I want to hone my skills before doing that board. The Mojo 60 MOS really needs a good job doing of the mods because it's it's a bit like a Fisher Price toy when it's unmodded so it, I need to do a really good job on that. Um, but that said, the, the Durgod Taurus K320 is a great keyboard as well and it's well worth some investment in terms of both money and time. Um, so yeah, this isn't just a practice run. I, I really want to get the, the, the Taurus to the Durgod Taurus K320 to as high a standard as I possibly can. And with that, let's get into it. To start off with, I need to get the case apart. The Durgod Taurus K320 
case is, is clipped together only and not screwed. It's very nerve wracking the first time trying to remove the top case but it's fine once you've done it a few times. The easiest way I've found is to use two plastic levers to work the corners. These orange levers I'm using here are plastic car interior trim levers that are designed to take damage and bending instead of the plastic you are levering open. And they work perfectly for keyboards as well. There's a clip to be careful of after you've done the side clips, after you've unclipped all of the side, the, the, the top case remains clipped down to the top of the plate um, by an awkward little clip, at least it has been awkward on my keyboard, and it's between and below the F8 and F9 keys. It needs some up would force to, dishing, to disengage the clip while pulling the top case clear of the board. Once that top case is removed, you just need to undo all the screws going down through the plate into the bottom case. Undoing those will release the whole top plate and PCB kind of assembly from that bottom case then and it can be lifted out. Um, when you lift it out, don't forget about the, the short lead that connects the PCB to the USB-C port inside that bottom case there. Next was to remove the dampening I installed previously. Silicone dampening is a great option, but what I learned after doing the previous mods on the Taurus K320, which by the way was my first go at modding any keyboard, if it's completely full up to the PCB there is no room for acoustics of any kind which isn't ideal. It muffles the sound too much and makes the plate feel too solid while typing. There should be at least some clearance when using such a, a, a dense form of dampening so, so just make sure if you use silicone that you don't fill up too much you just leave a bit of a gap for the acoustics there. And next was the desolder. It was really easy with the desoldering gun. Just hold it in place over the switch pin on the solder, wobble it from side to side if it's taken a while to melt. Once the tip of the gun drops over the connection as the solder softens, just wait another second to ensure it's melted right through, and then with a the gun held dead upright to create, to create kind of a seal, press the trigger to suck the solder up through the terminal. Some connections will, will desolder perfectly, while others will leave some solder behind deep in the terminals. These will most likely need to be resoldered and desoldered again. Um, when I was desoldering, my thinking is that you should just make sure the solder is fully melted, but take care not to leave the gun on the PCB any longer than necessary to avoid heat damage. Once desoldered, you just remove the PCB. There is usually one screw connecting it to the plate, um, and then remove the switches from the plate using a normal switch puller. Next for me was the biggest job of the whole mod. I had to clean every switch to remove as, as much super lube oil, that, which was what I previously used to top lube the switches as possible. Anytime you're modding or building, the switches is the biggest job if you're lubing and filbing. But this was next level, having to clean these switches as well just took it to a whole other level. Um, we have in our house the Mrs. Buys an all natural cleaning product called Dr. Bronner. I've noticed since we've had it in the house that it's a badass degreaser, which is essentially what you're doing when you clean any switch. The cleaning product will have more of a bearing on the, out on the outcome when cleaning oil or grease than the cleaning method itself. And this stuff seems a good choice as it's all natural, um, so likely not very corrosive, but has excellent degreasing properties. I made a strong batch of Dr. Bronner and water for the degreaser and then a hot water, water bath to remove the degreaser. Then I cleaned each switch with a cloth, then dried them thoroughly in the sun. The main thing when cleaning switches in baths of water and chemical mixes is the center mast in the bottom housing. I left these in the Spanish sun for a good few hours and while the visible surfaces were bone dry, the center mast still had standing water in them, which obviously made a horrible sound when actuating the switch, which is obviously when the stem pole enters the housing mast, um, which makes kind of like a horrible squelchy noise. Um, to, to get over this, I used a dry brush to remove this water on every stem um, that had standing water in them obviously just kind of wiping away the the, the water from the brush as I was going um, and then on to just a normal run of lube and films in this case I was using Crytox 205 grade zero and the KBD fans 0.15 switch films in red I like the red um, switch films as it was easy to see if I'd forgotten any switch any switches once they were reassembled so now I'll play you a quick sound comparison test of the of the oiled switches that I did previously, then the cleaned, and then the re-lube switches. Um, this really shows how effective the clean was. Um, the top row is the original super lubed set from last time um, with kind of like an over lubed sound. The middle row is the cleaned switches which sound pretty near to being stock again to me. Then the bottom row is the freshly lubed and film switches.
I really like cherry black switches. I like the slight roughness that cherry switches have in contrast to the smoothness of some of the more premium linears. I don't like them better than switches like the Alpacas and, and, um, and Ink Blacks. I just think the roughness they have isn't a worse than the smoother situation. I just think it's different and very satisfying. Now we're ready to reassemble. I still wanted some dampening between the case and the PCB as the sound is too hollow when stock. The geometry of this particular keyboard is that they've tried to keep the board thin Thin, but in order to make it um, solid so as the height adjustment legs aren't too long the bottom case thickens at the top to create some angle while the legs are folded up which in turn creates some deeper hollow sections inside the case I decided to use the previously made silicone insert to fill these deeper hollow sections just by cutting it up and removing them for dampening the rest of the case I opted for some non-slip desk and shelf matting uh, which is like a it's still like a spongy stuff um, but I chose it because it's thinner than most foam inserts and packing material but a higher density to sit more naturally alongside the, the kind of dense silicone above this left a small gap under the pcb for acoustics next it was time for stab mods this is an important one not to forget on a soldered keyboard if you forget chuck the stabs in and start soldering away the stabilized switches will need to be desoldered again to get the stabs out i cleaned and re-lubed the stabs cleaned and taped the pcb then reinstalled them this fabric plaster tape stuff that you use for, for doing the tape mod on stabilizers is really really sticky stuff but obviously any grease or oil on the plate will make them slip around and look a mess so I just use rubbing alcohol every time to clean the plate first just to make sure you get really good adhesion to the to the plate itself with that done it was time to tack weld the PCB as I will be calling it I installed switches in the four corners of the plate and one in the center placed the PCB over them and soldered them all to create a solid workpiece for the rest of the soldering job from here you just in install all the switches as you would on a hot swap board checking the pins as you go um, when soldering you're looking to fill the terminal and leave like a nice cartoon mountain shaped pile of solder on top completely covering the pins i don't know the kind of electrician standard or correct method of doing this but i treated it the same as i would welding and the way i was taught to weld um, which is to drive the welding material into the joint to encourage flow in the correct direction. In this case, you want to drive solder directly down into the terminal. So feed the wire at least at a 40 degree angle, if not more vertical, to encourage the filling of the terminal. Even the rough looking ones will still make a good connection for the signal, provided that solder has filled the terminal. And given you'll not see it once assembled, I don't think it's worth desoldering to make any, any, you know, any soldered connections look pretty. Practice makes perfect and you'll get plenty of practice on each board that you have to solder. Um, once soldered, I gave all the pins a good looking at just to see if I'd missed any before plugging it into the computer for testing with a keyboard tester. It's well worth doing the test of the PCB, obviously, before moving on to assembly because you'll just have to take it apart again if, you, if you've missed any. Um, and now we reassemble. Assembly is an opportunity to make sure that you've done good work, kind of like a quality control. Um, if you're having to force anything together, then something is usually wrong. When you come up against an issue, you must do some inspection if you feel like excessive force is needed to press or screw anything together. While reassembling this one, I could feel that there was too much thickness to the, to the yellow silicone dampening that I was using. I thinned this down a bit and cut slots in the, blue in the blue foam below it to ensure the PCB fully landed in the case. With that done, it was simply installation of the PCB and plate assembly into the bottom case and reinstatement of the screws, installation of the top case and installation of the keycaps. With that all done and done, it's time to enjoy the fruits of my labour with a short typing test.